Welcome to Utah Stories Top 5, where we scour all of the top headlines of the day and sift through all of the spin and clutter to present to you the most important and pressing headlines, saving you countless hours. I'm your host for today, Matthew Pine, and let's get into our top five. Number one, Utah lawmakers make it safer for clergy to report abuse, but will it really protect children? Number two, Nikki Haley suspends her campaign and leaves Donald Trump as the last major Republican candidate. Number three, tech talk ban to be introduced to lawmakers. Number four, new Salt Lake City Airport tunnel gets opening date. And number five, Moab locals open climbing gym. But before we get into our headlines, be sure to smash that like button and subscribe to our channel. And today's episode is brought to you by Utah Stories Magazine. Did you know that for just three bucks a month, you can have Utah Stories print magazine delivered right to your door? Utah Stories has been in print for nearly 20 years, and the reason people still love reading it on paper is that it's a very unique and fun, tangible way to experience the world around you. Screens might be taking over our consciousness, but print media will never die. Why? Because print offers a way to connect in a real-world manner. Let's not undermine our real-world communities believing that somehow online communities should replace them. Utah Stories is your connection to the real world. All right, let's dive into our first headline. Utah lawmakers make it safer for clergy to report abuse, but will it really protect children? A new bill allows Utah faith leaders from civil or criminal liability if they report ongoing children abuse based on information obtained from a perpetrator during a confession but it stops short of requiring them them to do so, according to the Salt Lake Tribune. uh, Lorianne Thorpe, executive director of uh, Prevent Child Abuse Utah, said her team was supportive of its passage, but she ultimately hopes to see reporting abuse required in cases of sexual and physical abuse. When the information comes from the perpetrator, then we have 100% knowledge that the crime has taken place, Thorpe noted. In order to protect children and to make sure it doesn't happen again, the abuse needs to be brought to light and handled through proper law enforcement channels. Story number two, Nikki Haley suspends her campaign and leaves Donald Trump as the last major Republican candidate. Nikki Haley suspended her presidential campaign on Wednesday after being defeated across the country on Super Tuesday. Donald Trump is now the last remaining candidate for the 2024 Republican nomination. Haley didn't endorse former president in a speech in Charleston, South Carolina. Instead, she encouraged him to earn the support of the coalition of moderate Republicans and independent voters who supported her. It is now up to Donald Trump to earn the votes of those in our party and beyond it who did not support him. And I hope he does that, she said. At its best, politics is about bringing people into your cause, not turning them away. And our conservative cause badly needs more people. Comment down below what you think about the election season so far. Story number three, TikTok ban, TikTok ban to be introduced to lawmakers. A group of lawmakers are introducing a bill to effectively ban TikTok, according to ABC4 News. While the ban isn't limited to TikTok, it will include the social media platform along, among entities that would be banned, including its parent company, ByteDance. Legislation makes it unlawful for American app platforms to offer any apps that are operated by foreign adversaries like China, Russia, North Korea, or Iran. Now, uh, lawmakers define this as one of these countries having at least 20% operational authority over the app, as well as uh, if a company's headquarters is within the adversary's borders. Support for a national TikTok ban is starting to wane, though. The percentage of U.S. US adults taking part in a Pew Research Center survey who say they support a ban declined from 50% in March to 38%. It is even lower among teens, uh, of which only 15% surveyed said they would back legislation. What do you think about the ban? Number four, New Salt Lake Airport tunnel gets opening date. As everyone knows, the infamous walk to the gates of the Salt Lake City Airport is truly well-known by all, but not well-liked. Shorter walks from security to your gate at the Salt Lake City International Airport are drawing closer as crews continue work on the central tunnel, according to KSL. Once complete, the 1,100-foot-long tunnel will connect concourses A and B with moving sidewalks and eventually two trams. 
On Wednesday, airport officials said the tunnel is now slated to open on October 22nd. The walking distances for the vast majority of passengers here are really going to go down. Salt Lake City Department of Airport's Executive Director Bill Wyatt said in a video describing the new airport design. Comment down below about what you think uh, about the new airport changes. And number five, Moab locals open a climbing gym. Moab is known for its outdoor rock climbing, sandstone spires, right off the road cragging on Wall Street, and splitter cracks at nearby Indian Creek. Some people move to Moab primarily for the climbing, and many devoted climbers have home training setups, hangboards, campus boards, or full-on bouldering walls in their garages. But there hasn't been an indoor community climbing gym in Moab until this winter. Climb Moab Gym, launched by two local climbers and their Las Vegas-based investment partner, opened in January of this year. The idea of launching a climbing gym where climbers could purchase day passes or memberships and enjoy continually updated routes with their other climbers have been floating around for two years. Local climber Britt Zale took it up and created a business plan in 2021, and she was joined by another Moab climber, Kaya Lindsay, in 2022. They, after they partnered, they serendipitously uh, met with a, an interested investor. And the question of the day, can your cats have seasonal depression? Is this actually a thing? Looks like cats help with seasonal depression and can have seasonal depression. It's, is there a recognition of seasonal affective disorder in cats? No, but that doesn't mean there aren't cats experiencing it, Dr. Lilly says. There are cats who seem to have significant changes in their overall mental health, well-being, and behavior with seasonal changes. And our adventure of the day is the new restaurant, Bonnie and Clyde's, that is located on 611 South Main Street. Uh, I just had their lunch yesterday with my colleague Allegra, and their food was spectacular. And not only that, the location is beautiful on the inside. Um, it's it's modern, but it does have a 1930s flair as well. And they will be opening a speakeasy right next door in the coming months. And I want to mention before we go, our Shades event is coming up now on Friday, March 15th, just a week and a day from now from 7 to 9 p.m. to launch our new March beer issue. Uh, we are very excited for this uh, launch and for this issue, and we hope to see you all there. Thank you so much for joining me today. Remember, if you like this content and you want to engage in a greater degree with your local community, go out and subscribe to either Utah Stories print magazine or our digital free newsletter uh, from utahstories.com. You can subscribe to our newsletter uh, that offers all of the stories that we're covering in-house. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time.